ओम श्री मंजुनाथ है नमा वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल द फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड माय फेलो कलीग्स द टॉपिक फॉर टुडेज क्लिनिकल लेक्चर इज मेडिकल ऑडिट आई वाज स्पीकिंग ब्रॉडली ऑन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउ मेडिकल ऑडिट वाज रिवॉल्ड एंड द वेरियस डेफिनेशंस देन द रीजंस व्हाई मेडिकल ऑडिट इज टू बी कैरीड आउट and uh, the various steps involved in conducting a medical audit in a clinical setting and uh, what is the difference between a clinical audit and a clinical research and uh, lastly i would also tell about the various uh, ethical issues that are involved and also a uh, brief uh, uh, case study how a medical audit is to be done in a clinical setting let me begin my presentation with a quote which says that the financial deficiencies can eventually be met but medical deficiencies may cost lives and loss of health which can never be retrieved when we hear the term audit uh, usually we assume that it is some kind of a, a fault finding or a inquiry or even an investigation most of the times but basically audit is actually a evaluation of data documents and resources to check whether performance of systems meets some specified standards audit is actually a tool to find out what you do now compared with what you have done in the past and what you think you may wish to do in the future Uh, let us look at the uh, history of how medical audit was evolved uh, across the world the first instance was during the crimean war where uh, florence nightingale observed uh, unsanitary conditions that was cause for high mortality rates uh, where she was treating the soldiers in her hospital uh, she ensured uh, some strict sanitary routines and standards of hygiene Uh, the mortality rates uh, fell from staggering of 40% to 2%. Uh, this is recognized as uh, one of the earliest programs of outcome management. The other person was Ernest Cotman. Uh, Cotman was rec- recognized as one of the first true medical auditor following his work in 1912 on monitoring the surgical outcomes. his work basically anticipated contemporary approaches to quality monitoring and establishing accountability and managing resources efficiently uh, cotman's approach was more a clinical one whereas nightingales was more of a in contrast it was more of a epidemiological audit uh, when we see this both uh, instance uh, in spite of having a lot of success a medical audit was very slow to catch up uh, uh, our profession uh, it took almost 130 years and last in the past two or three decades we see that uh, 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 medical audit is practiced across various countries uh, like for example uh, uh, nhs has a framework uh, in the form of uh, clinical governance uh, where they do medical audits across various hospitals whereas in our country Uh, we are still lacking in that practice uh, let us look at one of the earliest definitions uh, uh, regarding the medical audit uh, it is a systematic criti- critical analysis of the quality of medical care including the procedures used for diagnosis and treatment the use of resources and the resulting outcomes and quality of life for patients Uh, basically medical audit was later evolved into clinical audit but even now uh, most of the times uh, medical audit is more frequently used uh, later just the critical analysis uh, uh, the critical word was removed from the definition which was uh, uh, the definition was arrived by nhs uh, the national institute of health and clinical excellence uh, puts uh, Uh, the definition more aptly which says a uh, clinical audit is a quality improvement process that seeks to improve patient care and outcomes through a systematic review against explicit criteria and implementation of change 
Aspects of structure, process and outcomes of care are selected and systematically evaluated against explicit criteria. Where indicated, changes are implemented at an individual, team or a service level and further monitoring is used to confirm improvement of healthcare delivery. Few of the reasons why we should undertake uh, uh, medical audit is uh, basically it is to assess and improve patient care, to do the right things uh, and to foster the culture of quality improvement in any clinical setting. Then to keep update with the evidence based uh, good practice, eliminate uh, some of the substandard practices. Nowadays actually it has become one of the essential component of our professional practice as well. Uh, it helps to improve the quality and effectiveness of healthcare and also it increases at the end of the day our job satisfaction. The question what clinical audit what it is and what it isn't. Clinical audit as I told is quite simply a way of measuring the quality of healthcare. It is not concerned with fault or discrepancy finding but with examination of working practice to improve effectiveness. If the objectives include uh, to improve the quality of records that are generated, to improve the quality of patient care, to stimulate the practice of scientific medicine and to eliminate substandard practices. Uh, let us look at how a clinical audit is to be carried out in any clinical setting. It is uh, basically a five step process. Firstly, uh, we need to have uh, done planning for what kind of audit we want to do. Then formulate standards and criteria selection. Then measuring performance, making improvements and sustaining those improvements. So in the first stage, when we plan for the audit, uh, we have to involve various stakeholders determine the audit topic and then plan for the delivery of the audit work. Stakeholders can be anyone involved in uh, providing or receiving the care. Uh, while determining the audit topic, we need to select with the view of uh, improving the quality or safety of care or of service delivery. Uh, Donabedian classification systems such as structure, process and outcome can be used while selecting the topic. Uh, structure is where suppose you have a documented policy for any of the treatment uh, guidelines for example you have a stroke protocol that needs to be implemented you need to train your staff to implement whatever uh, documented policy you have that forms the process and outcome is where you measure that whether it is practiced uh, efficiently. Some of the questions that are useful while uh, selecting any audit topic is Is there any evidence of wide variation in the clinical practice? Is good evidence available to formulate the audit standards? Like uh, whether there are some national clinical guidelines? Is the problem what we are uh, going to audit uh, uh, is measurable against the relevant standards? Is auditing the problem likely to improve the healthcare outcomes? as well as the process improvements. Is the topic, uh, suppose it's a topic uh, that is priority for the organization where we are working. Uh, is there evidence of uh, serious quality problem, for example, some of the patient complaints or high complication rates. The first stage, uh, uh, the third step in this is planning the delivery of audit work where we need to formulate the various aims and objectives once we select the topic. Then we need to identify uh, the skills and the people required to carry out the audit. Uh, especially it can be done through audit committee or audit team. The stage to involves uh, standards and criteria selection which has various steps like uh, we need to identify uh, the standards and audit criteria. Selecting and developing appropriate uh, performance levels, inculture and exculsion criteria, and exceptions. 
identification of standards can be done through uh, local standards in the form of uh, evidence-based guidelines or nationally endorsed uh, clinical guidelines or even uh, through clinical care programs or even professional bodies like suppose we want to do some audit in the uh, in, uh, neonatal ICU if we are following the national ne neonatology forum guidelines or Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine guidelines. Performance level, while selecting the uh, performance level, we should always keep in mind uh, that it should be specific, it should be measurable, achievable, relevant and uh, theoretically sound and timely. Basically, it should be evidence-based. The inclusion criteria is identify a target population to whom a clinical guideline is intended to apply. Excelsior criteria can be, uh, you need to define the areas outside the remit of the clinical guideline. Exception is uh, clinical acceptable reason or circumstance for not complying with the specific criteria. The third stage involves uh, measuring performance that includes uh, data collection, analysis and drawing conclusion and presentation of the results. <coughs> A collection of relevant data about current practices in order to felicitate comparison, then these uh, data needs to be converted into facts to identify the level of compliance with agreed standards, then identify the reason why the standard was not met, and then presentation of this data. The fourth stage involves uh, making improvements. Uh, which is development of the quality improvement plans. Uh, the quality improvement plans can be developed to address those areas which are requiring improvement. The stage uh, 5 involves uh, sustaining improvements that is uh, monitoring of the quality improvement plan, uh, performance indicators, then dissemination of those uh, improvements and at lastly uh, closing the loop by re-auditing. So these uh, five stages actually complete the audit cycle. Uh, coming to the difference most commonly what uh, most of them ask is about uh, what is the difference between the clinical audit and the research. Uh, clinical audit, uh, the aim is how close is the current practice to the best practice, whereas in research it aims at usually what is the best practice. Uh, clinical audit improves healthcare service, improves knowledge. Uh, it is carried out, the clinical audit is carried out by the members of multidisciplinary team. Uh, it is usually, research is usually carried out by specific researchers. Clinical audit is usually practice based, research is usually theory driven. Uh, or clinical audit is usually an ongoing process, whereas research is a one-off project. Clinical audit doesn't involve uh, an experimental treatment or a placebo, whereas research may involve experimental treatment or a placebo. Coming to the ethical issues, uh, usually uh, no formal ethical uh, approval is required unlike research. Uh, however, uh, we need to carry out the audit uh, within the ethical framework. Uh, basically, uh, confidentiality and uh, disclosure, disclosure of audit results is to be maintained and uh, no clinical audit should examine the work of another professional or speciality without their knowledge. Actually, in fact, they can be involved in the audit as well. Let us look at one of the case study how uh, audit is to be carried out. Suppose we are selecting a topic like uh, we are auditing whether uh, there is completion of the operating notes. Uh, we are selecting the uh, standards from the Royal College of uh, Surgeons. Uh, example, we, we are proposing a prospective or a retrospective study. Say we are taking 30 samples uh, where we are uh, where we are developed a performer and uh, we are assessing against this Royal College of Surgeons standards. Uh, how we measure the, in the step three? How we measure the performance uh, improve? Uh, how we measure the performance is we identify the areas that are poorly completed. Then the step four. Uh, suppose we make an action plan. Suppose there is a teaching session uh, for the surgeons, reminding them of the 
RCS guidelines and uh, we put up a poster in the operating room showing the standards. Uh, completing the loop by uh, again looking at the operation note statistically, suppose after six months we uh, re-audit and see, we can definitely see that there will be some amount of significant uh, improvement. Uh, whereas the fifth step is sustaining improvement, that is we keep on re-auditing it, uh, keep on uh, uh, drawing various performance indicators. Uh, I would like to end uh, my topic. Uh, medical or clinical audit refers to the culture of openness and willingness to self-evaluate and implement changes to improve the quality of healthcare.